Well, good morning. Glad you're here today. It's, been, uh, it's going to be a big day for us. And uh, if you're coming tonight for the uh, fireworks event, and I hope you do, I hope you will uh, take advantage of the best day in the state of Nebraska all year long. It's, uh, we, we dialed that up for you, and uh, we, we didn't want to shoot off fireworks in a thunderstorm. That had been dumb. Um, we did that a couple years ago. That was dumb, but um, it was fun. Anyway, um, a lot of people here, if, uh, if you could do me a favor and just park uh, far away uh, tonight um, and, and free up the parking spots for our guests that will be coming uh, park over here in the in the neighborhood uh, in the in the school. Uh, we've heard some rumors that there's some folks that'll be charging for parking in the area. Um, so it, uh, we are not charging. Stonebridge is not charging. So if somebody says, uh, you know, uh, n- so I, I understand uh, entrepreneurial spirit out there. Uh, but uh, anyway. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We got a great, great lineup, and your friends are going to love it. It's going to be a great time. So we're looking forward to uh, sharing with you this evening, and hope that you will invite somebody to come with you. Uh, we've got some people coming uh, with us. We hope and hope they'll be there. So that'll be great. All right, uh, we're in a message series called uh, uh, "Summer on the Mount." It's to take a look at the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus preached and some of the most powerful um, uh, words he's ever spoken, and, and su- certainly most influential words he's ever spoken, so we're, we're taking a look at that uh, this summer long. Matthew's chapter 5, 6, and 7, first book in the New Testament, Matthew, and uh, so uh, many of you have made the journey with us. I know quite a few here from people are, are listening to the podcast if they're on vacation and taking a look at that, so it's been kind of a fun summer already, and we're w- way into it right now. Uh, when, when you were a kid, I don't know if you, uh, when, um, you think back when you are maybe five or six years old, and you and your friends got together, and you made a vow to each other. And you said, cross my heart, hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. Right, because that's serious. <laughs> not every day do you stick a needle in your eye. Right? It's not, it's no, right? That's, a, that's a big commitment. Stick a needle in my eye. And then if you're really serious, you, you ramped it up and you pinky swore. We're taking a whole new level. Now, um, you knew that you knew that cross my heart, hope to die was a big deal. But you also knew that you could have an out if you needed to. How would you do that? Cross your fingers. Cross your fingers. Something's crossed. Right? And so say, so, hey, no, 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 no. I'm sticking a needle in your eye. No, you're not. I crossed my fingers. I got it now. No big deal, right? Uh, maybe my shoelaces recrossed, <laughs> right? And so that was an important deal. Uh, and you didn't have to fulfill the vow, and you didn't have to stick anything in your eye, but you crossed your fingers. That sort of thing get, gets carried into our adult life. We use the cross the fingers thing. I don't have to tell you that we're not so good at keeping our vow. All day long, we hear lies from people all the time. We wonder, who can we believe? Sure, I'll be there at 8 o'clock. I'll get started. uh, It's only going to cost 400 bucks. No big deal. I'll call you on Monday. And we we hear those things, but we know in the back of our mind, I bet they got something crossed. I bet they got their fingers crossed. I'm I'm sure of it. And we really don't. You know, because there's so much deceit in our world. So much deceit that we need lawyers to help us keep our commitments. Vow breaking is wild now. It just is crazy. In, uh, in our government, we, we watch people and, and we're just like, I think they're lying. I mean, we don't, and we don't even think anymore. They, in fact, it seems like nobody even gets in trouble anymore. When you can make statements, I did not have sexual relations. Right? What? Ah, he had his fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, no big deal. I will not raise taxes. Uh, oh, I had my fingers crossed. I didn't know anything about that going on. In, oh, they're crossing their fingers. And we let them off. Now, Jesus has a lot to say about that. 
And uh, we find out Matthew 5, 27 through 37, how serious this is to us uh, as followers of Jesus. You have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery, but I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Wow. So if your eye, even your good eye, a lot of pirates in the first century, I guess, I don't know. Even your good eye caused you to lust, gouge it out. Stick a needle in your eye. But I only got one good eye. And a lot of those, I'm sure people are thinking like, wait, how am I supposed to do that? It's not my fault she walked across. It's not my fault. So if your eye and your good eye cause you lust, gouge it out, throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your hand, even your stronger hand, cause you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. You've heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife unless she has been unfaithful causes her to commit adultery. Anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. So you have also heard that our ancestors were told you must not break your vows. You, may, you must carry out the vows you make with the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Do not say by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. Do not say by earth, because the earth is God's footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head. You can't turn one hair white or black. Just simply say yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil. So Jesus tells his listeners, in the kingdom of heaven, and what we're doing here, what we're establishing here in the kingdom of heaven, uh, that truth tellers, uh, it, it should just be normal for us. It's just truth telling is just normal. So no fingers are going to be crossed in the kingdom of God. We're not going to be people who say one thing and do another. We're going to be people who keep our word. Can you imagine the society, that, the, it, what it would be like if that was true? If, as Christ followers, we just live out that kind of thing, that we would be honest. When we said, hey, uh, we are going to put the check in right now, and that would happen. Or when, uh, uh, when somebody says, stands in front of the pastor and says, I do, I promise to love, care, comfort, defend, be faithful to her, to be faithful to him as long as I live, that that's, no, nobody's, fing nobody's finger crossing at that moment. Nobody's finger crossing. Now, just a little background here to help us understand that, that they would make these vows, and then they oftentimes would uh, invoke the name of God um, uh, to show how it's, it's kind of like, cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. But, but they would swear, by God, by God, I'm going to do this. And then they thought, whoa, 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 I need an out, because that, by God, that's a big deal. And so then they begin to start, by heaven, and by earth, because if somebody said, hey, you promised. Yeah, but I didn't say Yahweh. Didn't say Yahweh. Cross my fingers, hope to die, sorry. I, st I have an out, because I got, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go here. And so that's what was going on here. Numbers 30, verse uh, 2 says, a man who makes a vow to the Lord or makes a pledge under oath must never break it. He must do exactly what he said he would do, Deuteronomy 23. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, be prompt in fulfilling whatever you promised him. For the Lord your God demands that you promptly fulfill all your vows or you will be guilty of sin. So this is uh, super serious. In fact, we probably think, well, he's being really serious. Uh, yeah. Um, so when we say, so help me God. Or when I do a wedding, you know, I always... Uh, I say these words, now upon these spoken words of love, made in the presence of these witnesses, and before God, and before God, right? As a minister, the gospel of Jesus Christ in the great state of Nebraska. That's what I say. We're making a vow before God. But what happened over the course of time is that we wanted a little flexibility with that kind of stuff. 
We didn't want to have, we wanted kind of semi-binding, we were semi-serious about it. Um, so, so that's kind of, you know, where we've come to. And God, uh, you know, he says, well, you know, God made the heavens and the earth. He, you know, you can't swear by heaven and earth. You can't even swear by Jerusalem. You can't, you know, if, you're, if you say yes to the deal, you said yes to the deal. You can't, you know, you, you don't get an out on the deal. And in these little verses, Jesus tells us to be truth tellers, to say yes and to follow through. And to say no. Now, what would, and, and, and just mean it. So, what would it look like for you if that's what it was going to be? Um, so, when somebody says, Well, I think we should get together and do lunch, let's do lunch. I, I will call you. I will call you on Monday. Or, now, in the Christian community, this is kind of usually what we say I will pray for you. Now, we're. We're all, we're all good intention. Even with most of the vows we make, we're just good intent. We, 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 we mean well. So if you're going to say that I will pray for you, do that. In fact, now when I get prayer requests and somebody emails me something, I always respond But this. I am praying for you right now because I'm not sure I'm going to do it tomorrow. I mean, if everybody emails me, I have to pray for everybody, right? And so I was like, now. I will do it now. And I do. I stop and I take that time. So when I say that, that's really kind of what I'm doing. And I'm not crossing my fingers at that moment. I'm just like, no, I need to, if I'm going to be, you know, if somebody's going to do that, I'm going to be serious about it. And um, what does it mean for us as parents to be truth tellers? So when we tell our kid, well, I'm going to be at your game today. Or uh, we're going to carve out some time and go to the zoo this weekend. Uh, do we have our fingers crossed? Uh, you know, kids are checking things out all the time. They're seeing that if you keep your commitments or not, and someday they're going to grab the car keys, and they're going to say this. See you later. I'm going to the library. And you have the sneaky suspicion that they just crossed their fingers. I don't think, or I'm spending the night at... Um, and all kinds of red flags fly up because we're pretty sure there's fingers crossing going all, all over the place here. And so when a friend says to you, hey, I'll swing by later, or just let me know, any, is there anything I can do for you, or I'll get back with you, and we're just, not, we're just pretty sure they're not even serious about it. I really don't mind when somebody says to me, Mark, I just can't do that. In fact, it's kind of refreshing to me if somebody says, I'm not going to be, if I, if I promise to do that, I know I'm going to back out. I'm not going to, you know, so now it really helps me. And I cannot, I cannot tell you how many times over the course of 30 years of ministry that where I've had Christians say, I'm all in on the deal. I'm all in. I love this church. I would do anything for you and for it, and, and you can count on me. In fact, at the highest levels of leadership, where we've made commitments to each other and to the church and then just to walk away from it. No explanation, no really good ideas like, well, yeah, I, I know I said that I would give this much and I promise, but I had my fingers crossed when I made that commitment. All right. Ecclesiastes 5 says... Um, when you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through, for God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all your promises you make to him. It's better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. We make promises all the time to God. God, if you get me out of this, you, God, you get me a boyfriend that's got a job, I'll... or teeth or something. Uh, I will go to church. All the time. Or you help me, right? And Brian, oh, please, please, please. And he says, oh, okay, you're making that vow. That guy's not obligated to get you a boyfriend. Not obligated to do that. Uh, if we had a genie in the lamp, yes, the genie would do that. But God is not the genie in the lamp. But if he gets you a boyfriend with a job, you better come to church. So when it comes to making a vow, whether it's a marriage vow, whether it's a church membership vow, where it's a parent dedication vow, 
Those are major league deals. Major league deals. And we better take it seriously. I had a feeling on some of these things we weren't taking it very seriously. We had parents dedicating themselves and their kids to the Lord. And after the photo ops, we never saw them again. And it began to really concern me. Here we are making a commitment before God and before our church and before our community. And we take a few photos and we feel pretty good about it. But we never see him again in church or anything. And there's no, no right? There's nothing. And so I said to our children's ministry, I, 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 think, we're just, I think we're not doing, I, th- I don't know, I think the Lord's going to be mad at us for doing it this way. And I think people got their fingers crossed. And um, so we began to ramp that up, and we've had to tell people, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I know you want to, but mm, you haven't even made a commitment to our church yet. You got to be a member? So now that, well, yeah. I mean, you want us to make a commitment, to, right? And so we begin to talk about commitments and vows and keeping and, and promises. And I'm sure there's some folks that go through the motions to get the stuff done. But uh, um, we decided at Stonebridge we weren't going to cross our fingers to the parents. So parents, if you made that vow, that's a big deal. It's a big deal to us and it's a big deal to God. Those of you who are married, how are you doing? Uh, The first part of this text talks about adultery. Now, the religious folks said, well, I haven't had sex with her. Right? I'm doing fine. Remember, thou shalt not kill. Haven't done it. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Not, I'm, right? And so Jesus ramps it up even more. (coughs) And he says, well, guys, gals, we... I know that we might not have done the deal, but we would have liked to, or given the right opportunities, or if nobody found out what happens in Jerusalem. (laughs) And you said things like in sickness, health, and good times and bad, until death do us part. And you took that vow before God. Now, I absolutely think that God delights when we do that, by the way. I think he absolutely delights when we, we stand before him and, and say, I promise. And, and when we get into the baptistry and we say, I promise. And when I, and we, you know, we make these vows of commitments as parents, I promise. I think God goes, yes, 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 yes. That's a big deal to him. Um, because we're coming out of the shadows of, of, of just kind of playing at this game. And uh, we're standing before God in our church. And uh, in fact, when, we, when we're baptized into Christ, we are saying, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. I have him now as my Lord and Savior. I think that makes him smile. I think that's a huge deal. But I think he's looking and going, uh, is that, are, there, are there fingers crossed? Are their fingers crossed? He's like, I don't know. And uh, I think I do think he loves that stuff when we make a commitment to him in that way. But do we live in a commitment-free zone where nobody? You know, I think in our culture today we li- we live in a culture-free zone where nobody wants to make a commitment to anything. Hey, let's just live together. Let's just do that. Because marriage is a big commitment, and I'm not sure. I can do that, right? A lot of crossings going on. I'm not going to join a church. I don't want to step forward and say I'm a member of the church. I don't want to say, well, you can count on me. I'm going to serve and I'm going to give just attending here. It's kind of like saying, hey, I want to do marriage on my own terms. I'm going to come up with my own concept of marriage and what it means. And in fact, I hear people say this all the time. Well, we consider ourselves married. Or I consider myself a member of Stonebridge. Really? You went to the one-on-one? Oh, no. No. I haven't done that. But I consider myself a member. 
I just have to wonder how God feels when Christians say, well, I'm not going to make a commitment, and I'm not going to join in a fellowship, and I'm not going to stand to be counted. And when you make those commitments before God, you better not cross your fingers and be very careful about, and that's why we take them seriously, be very careful about making formal vows. The purpose behind those vows are to help, help us be accountable and demonstrate love and loyalty. But if you break them, which most of us do from time to time, then what are we going to do with that? How are we going to deal with the betrayal at that moment? Well, I do think that we, it, that's why we acknowledge before God and our spouse and our small group leader or our pastors, here's what I said I was going to do. I didn't do it. I need forgiveness at this moment. In fact, I think that's why we come to church at times when we have a little bit of moment of communion and we can just say, God, I know I promised. I didn't cross my fingers, but I blew it on this deal and I was too, totally serious and I want to reconnect and recommit right now. Think about this. And then the great thing about God is that He is a covenant-keeping God, a promise-keeping kind of God. He's a maker of vows, and he keeps his word. And he doesn't cross his fingers when he says to you and to me, Mark, I promise to forgive you of all your sins. Are you crossing your fingers, God? No, 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 I'm totally serious about this. And what if God was to say, you know, Mark, I promise to forgive you, but I had my fingers crossed at that moment because what you did there was way out of bounds. And there's no way I can forgive that. There's no way I'm going to do that. I'm sorry, you're going to hell. But you promised. I, well, I meant well. Don't you, aren't you glad that you don't have a God who means well? That when he says, Mark, I, I promise to forgive you of all your sins, past, present, future, life and long around. I promise to take you to heaven with me. I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit to help guide you and encourage you and convict you. I promise that I'm going to give you a church family to be a part of that's going to love you anyway. And we go, oh, okay. And, and he, he, so when he says, well, whoever calls on my name will be saved. And he says to me, well, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're not going to fear any evil because I will always be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you so that when you go through difficult times, I'm not a distant God who doesn't care. And aren't you glad that he kept that promise? Aren't you glad? I mean, how many of us have walked through the valley of the shadow of death recently? This week. Many of us in this room have. I'm glad that God didn't say, well, I meant to, but I'm kind of busy with the universe thing here. And he says to you and to me, well, I've gone to prepare a place for you, and I'm going to take you home, and I'm going on the record on that one. And that should help us relax a little bit. Because we serve a covenant-keeping God, and He doesn't have His fingers crossed, and He promises to save me and adopt me and walk with me, and I can count on Him. And then what eventually that allows us to do is relax enough to want to be like our Heavenly Father, who's a covenant-keeping God. No more fingers crossing, letting our yes be yes and our no be no. Just being honest about it. Some of us probably need to deal with God on this one right now. And we're going to let you do that as we pray. Here we are, God. Uh, at the same time, just super thrilled to be here. At the same time, kind of convicted of some stuff we've been doing. And if, there's no doubt that we've, um, you know, we've meant well. But at the same time, we didn't realize that you took this stuff pretty seriously. So even maybe in this quietness of this moment, uh, we reconnect with you on this deal and um, for some of us we made some pretty major uh, commitments and um, messed up on the deal met well we promised some stuff but we feel like we've let everybody down and 
not quite even you, and we're not quite sure how to uh, find our way back. But since you promised that you would forgive us and help us and not abandon us, we're going to trust you on that deal. And so here in this moment, we pledge to you our faith and our love. Lord, we thank you so much for being a covenant-keeping God who um, has gone on the record with your love towards us. And help us with that as well, in Christ's name.